Greetings. The following is part of a series of lectures on black holes. In this particular lecture, we will try to extend the Schwarzschild geometry using Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. The outline of this lecture is as follows. We will first give a brief summary of what we have learned last lecture. Then we will learn how to classify singularities and describe what they mean physically. Next, we will learn how to remove coordinate singularities and extend the Schwarzschild geometry using Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Afterwards, we will learn how to visualize radial null geodesics by learning how to draw Finkelstein diagrams. Then we will discuss the nature of event horizons and how the time and space coordinate change when an object crosses the event horizon. And finally, we will look at what goes wrong at the singularity of a static black hole. In the last lecture, we proved Birkhoff's theorem, which states that a spherically symmetric solution to the vacuum Einstein field equation is static and asymptotically flat. Moreover, we derived the Schwarzschild metric, which takes the following form. Recall from the last lecture that there are two singularities in the Schwarzschild metric, one at r equals 2m and one at r equals 0. In subsequent sections, we will classify these singularities and explore how we can further extend the Schwarzschild geometry. In general relativity, there are two types of singularities, the first of which is known as the coordinate singularity. These singularities are also known as removable singularities as they can be eliminated by a coordinate transformation. The second kind of singularity is known as a curvature singularity. These singularities cannot be removed by a coordinate transformation. To distinguish between the two, one has to compute some sort of invariant and show that the singularities exist in such invariant. The invariant com commonly used in general relativity is the Kretschmann scalar which will be listed in subsequent slides. Now, let us introduce Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates. Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates are a system of coordinates for a Schwarzschild geometry that are adapted to radial null geodesics. With the benefit of hindsight, we know that the singularity at r equals 2m is simply a coordinate singularity and not a curvature singularity. We know this because the Eddington-Finkelstein coordinate seemingly removes the singularity at r equals 2m. This can be done by introducing an advanced time coordinate similar to that in special relativity. However, this advanced time coordinate is not simply t bar equals t plus r, but one has to write the advanced time coordinate as u equals t plus f of r, where f bar is some arbitrary function of r. Therefore, dt can be written as follows. And to save writing, let us write the potential as follows and the angular part as follows. Therefore, substituting the dt in, in terms of du and dr in the Schwarzschild metric yields the following. From the equation above, we can see that the coordinate singularity at r equals 2m is completely encoded in the dr squared coefficient. One simple way to remove the coordinate singularity is to sem simply set the dr squared coefficient to zero. Doing so yields the following differential equation. Solving for f of r yields the following, where c is some arbitrary constant. Therefore, with the above coordinate transformation, the Schwarzschild metric in Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates can be written as follows. Now, one may notice that there is still a singularity at r equals zero. We will show in subsequent slides that this is in fact a curvature singularity and cannot be removed via coordinate transformations. Unlike the Schwarzschild metric in Schwarzschild coordinates, equation 3.4 is smooth for all r greater than zero. Moreover, equation 3.4 has determinant minus r to the four times sine squared theta, which means that the metric is non-degenerate for all r greater than zero. It is important to note that the metric is degenerate at theta equals zero and theta equals pi. However, this is just because the coordinates theta and phi are not defined at the poles of the sphere. Nevertheless, this implies that the metric signature is Lorentzian for r greater than zero, as a change of sign would require an eigenvalue passing through zero. With the Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates, the Schwarzschild spacetime can now be extended through the surface r equals 2m to a new region with r less than 2m. Another question one may ask is that, is equation 3.4 a solution to the vacuum Einstein field equation in the region r less than 2m? The answer is yes. This is because the metric 
components are real analytic functions of the above co coordinates. Therefore, that is, such function can be expanded as a convergent power series about any point. Recall that if a real analytic metric satisfies the Einstein field equation in some open set, then it will satisfy the Einstein equations everywhere. Therefore, since we know that the equation 3.4 satisfies the Einstein, the vacuum Einstein field equation for R greater than 2M, it must also satisfy the, the equation at R greater than zero. Note that the new region with R between zero and 2M is spherically symmetric. Another important question is, is equation 3.4 consistent with Birkhoff's theorem? Recall that in the region R greater than 2M, the Schwarzschild solution has killing vector K equals partial T. Now, let us determine what this is in ingoing eddington finkelstein coordinates. Denoting the latter by X mu, we find that partial t is equal to partial u. The eddington finkelstein coordinates are independent of t except for when u equals t plus r plus 2m ln r minus 2m. We can extend the definition of k to r less than or equal to 2m since, and since k squared is equal to 1 minus 2m over r, k is null at r equals 2m, and space-like in the region from r equals 0 to r equals 2m. Therefore, the extended uh, Schwarzschild solution is only static in the region r greater than 2m. Now, let us introduce the notion of Eddington Finkelstein diagram. The Finkelstein diagrams. Finkelstein diagrams are a way of understanding the geometry of space time through studying the radial null geodesics. To draw Finkelstein diagrams, we first have to solve the equation of motion for light rays described by the Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Consider a radial null geodesic. By definition, the word radial implies that theta and phi are constant and therefore d theta and d phi are zero. Moreover, the word null implies that the interval ds squared equals zero. Therefore, equation 3.4 can be written as follows. There are two solutions to the above equation. The first solution is more obvious. That is du equals zero. Therefore, u is the following, where c1 is some arbitrary constant. For r less than 2m and r greater than 2m, r decreases as t increases. For an observer as infinity, this is therefore an equation of an out ingoing radial light ray. Now, let us consider the second solution, namely the following. Solving this equation yields this, where C2 is some arbitrary constant. In the region R greater than 2M, R increases as T increases, and therefore the solution corresponds to an outgoing light ray. On the other hand, in the region R less than 2M, the solution corresponds to an ingoing light ray, as R decreases as T increases. As a result, we see that the light behaves differently inside and outside the radius r equals 2m. When r equals 2m, the du term in the equation 4.3 vanishes. We obtain a third solution to the differential equation, namely dr equals 0 or r equals 2m. To further examine the behavior of light outside the region r equals 2m, we examine the space-time diagram. To do so, we plot, we plot t star equals u minus r versus r. As briefly mentioned, t star is the time measured by an observer infinitely far from the, uh, from the body. In this figure, the black lines correspond to the solution u equals constant, while the brown lines correspond to possible solutions of equation 4.4. The black dotted vertical line corresponds to the solution r equals 2m, and the red vertical line corresponds to the physical singularity. At each point in the space-time diagram, a future light cone is defined by a solution of u equals constant or a solution of equation 4.4. As we can see from the figure, as the radius decreases, the future light cone gets increasingly tipped towards the singularity at r equals 0. At r equals 2m, a null geodesic allows for light to orbit the black hole in a circular motion. And at r less than 
less than or equal to 2m, all time-like geodesics head towards a singularity. Now, let us talk about the event horizon. Given that a Given that at each point in space-time, no object with mass may move outside of the future light cone, any object that has passed the region R equals 2m has to travel faster than the speed of light to avoid being sucked into the singularity. This implies that one may not extract information once the object has passed the region R equals 2m, and thus regions inside and outside this boundary are physically disconnected. The boundary R equals 2M is known as the event horizon because it divides the space-time into two different regions with different physical properties. The event horizon is generated by light rays that neither escape to infinity nor fall into the singularity. This is because outside the event horizon, light rays may escape to, into infinity. And on the other hand, inside the event horizon, light rays can no longer escape and will always fall into the singularity. Consider a case where r is constant and therefore dr equals zero. Thus, the line element is as follows. When r is less than 2m, the term guu is positive. So the line element is space-like. In contrast, when r is greater than 2m, the term guu is negative. So the line element is time-like. This is also evident in the aforementioned eddington finkelstein diagram. Here, the vertical lines r equals constant is always inside the local light cone at r less than 2m. However, at r less than 2m, the local light cone is tipped such that the vertical line is always lying outside, outside, outside the light cone. At the event horizon, the vertical line contributes to one of the two null curves. Outside r equals 2m, r equals constant is a space in space time, while r equals 2m is, while inside r equals 2m, r equals constant is a time in space time. Geometrically, once we cross the event horizon, space and time trades places with each other. At any time t, dt equals zero. Therefore, the surface of the event horizon is described by the following. Integrating over the surface of a sphere yields the area of the event horizon. This area is time independent and can only be changed by altering the mass of a black hole. And since nothing can escape the black hole, the mass and by extension, the area of the event horizon cannot classically decrease. Recall from a couple slides back that there seems to be a curvature singularity at r equals zero. To prove that this is indeed a curvature singularity, one can compute an invariant known as the Kretschmann scalar, k. The computation of the Kretschmann scalar is tedious and will be left in as, as an exercise to the reader. The important takeaway is that the Kretschmann scalar diverges at r e, as r equals zero. Since this is a scalar, it diverges in all charts. Therefore, there exists no chart for which the metric can be smoothly extended through r equals zero. As a result, r equals zero is an example of a curvature singularity where the tidal forces become infinite and all known laws of physics break down. I hope you've learned something from this lecture and see you next time. Thank you.